The life and untimely death of TLC's Lisa Lopez, up next on BET Tonight. everyone, I'm Ed Gordon. Fade has dealt another cruel blow to the entertainment world as yet another star leaves before her time. Lisa Left Eye Lopez has died at the age of 30. Lopez was killed Thursday evening in a car accident while vacationing in Central America. She was one third of the most prolific selling girl group in history. Her style and persona gave the group TLC its edge and her personal life gave tabloids headlines. She had overcome so much personal turmoil that it is hard to imagine that she is gone. But the reality is, she is. Tonight we'll be joined by many of her friends and colleagues to remember the Philadelphia native who was a month away from her 31st birthday. Earlier today, I spoke with her TLC sisters, Tian Tibas Watkins and Rosanda Chili Thomas. Chili, let me start with you uh, and ask. Uh, I know it's been difficult. I know you ha even uh, or haven't even had a, an opportunity to to grieve. But as the day goes on, is it is it setting in more and more for you? You know, it's it's really not setting in. It's like. You know, when I watch the TV and I see the videos, I, it makes me break down. If I hear her voice, that makes me break down. It's like, I don't know, it's just real hard to accept because it's so unexpected. I just, I just never, never in my life expected anything like this. t Boz, when is the last time that you spoke with Lisa? Excuse me? When is the last time that you spoke to Lisa? Um... Three weeks ago, I was in the hospital, and she had came to see me. Um, we didn't get to talk much because I wasn't feeling that good that day, but she had sent me a lot of plants and stuff, and I still knew she was there. I know that, uh, as I said, it's a difficult time for you, and unfortunately in today's world, we expect people to come on TV almost immediately without having the opportunity to grieve. But as you can see today, so many people love you all and uh, Lisa as well, and they want to grieve with you. I know you've been saying it all day, but what's the one thing, Chili, that you want people to understand? There was so much written about her, and unfortunately much of the coverage has been some of the problems that she had today. But what do you want people to know about her? I just want people to know that Lisa is, <clears throat> she is so sweet, you know, she is just, she's really one of the sweetest people, and I mean, regardless of whatever, I think, I think she was totally misunderstood, she just wanted people to try to understand her, you know, when you are a very creative person, you're very artistic, you know, sometimes it's hard to understand a person like that, you know, because they have a lot to say, because they are so talented. You know, but um, Lisa is just, she's so creative. I mean, she's just, she's a sweetie, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I want people to remember, and I want them to remember the phenomenal things that she has done in this world and how, what an inspiration she's been for fans and just in being in this group doing phenomenal things with us as well. <clears throat> that's what I want people to remember, not the negative stuff because that's that's that you know we don't want that t Boz, what about her legacy what do you think that that will be uh, you all have have made so much history in fact uh having three different individuals come together and, and, and make one bond as you did musically what do you think her legacy is going to be musically um <clears throat> As far as me and Chili are concerned, TLC is still forever. Mm -hmm. Lisa's still going to be with us no matter what. She can never, ever, ever, ever be replaced. Well, but, let's... Go ahead. I'm sorry, honey. All right, I know she will want to be remembered as an extraordinary businesswoman, an outstanding creative person. Wish she was. Yeah, there was so much that people didn't know about her, her, her ability to paint, uh, the spirituality that uh, took her to Honduras. Uh, there's so much that uh, is unknown about 
people who are in the public uh, public's eye. People think they know you, but but they don't know you. What's outside of her charity? What's the one thing that that uh, Tibaj you want people to go away with? I was just amazed how hospitable she was. Like she would give her last dime. And we'll go, Lisa, what you doing? She'll go, no, no, they're going to come live with me. I'm going to take care of this person. She'll give the shirt off her back to anybody who needs help. And that takes a really, really different type of person with a big, extremely big heart. And that's exactly what Lisa had. And um, I just wish people would stop focusing so much on the negative. We're past that. And it's really just a, a small portion of, you know, such an extraordinary woman and it, I just wish that people would know like how gracious she was and how smart she was and you know the furniture she would make and hand carve wood boxes and did drawings and paintings and building furniture I mean she was an amazing person she named all the titles to our album she was just overly creative my thanks to the ladies we'll be back with the man she called soulmate Andre Risen after this Storms have come and gone, leaving a trace of not one God given reason Because my life is ten shades of gray I pray all ten fade away, sell the praise them for the seven days And like his promise is true, only we're back celebrating the life of Lisa Lopez. We're joined now by a, a, a young man who uh, shared his life with uh, Lisa. Andre Risen joins us. Andre, uh, you and I spoke uh, during the day, and I know that uh, this is not an easy uh, time for you. You wanted to come on, but we know that you are grieving and it's difficult, and we appreciate uh, your time. And I know you just wanted to send, first of all, your thanks for all the love that uh, is being shown to Lisa. Yeah, you know, um, uh she was just a blessing to this earth, and um, I've listened to a lot of fans, and I've listened to a lot of followers uh, call in and express their condolences and uh, express their love. Uh, I'd like to thank them uh, for doing that. Um, she was a true inspiration to many and to many to come. Uh, she was uh, not only my best friend, she was my soulmate and um, like a wife to me. You know, and um, she was something special, and I'm quite sure she would love for her legacy to be carried on by people that she's touched, whether it was a child or a parent, a mother, because I believe her and her colleagues, Tian and Chili, um, they created some of the most inspirational songs to, uh, to heal this earth, and that's what she was about. She was about healing. And... Um, Hey, Dre. It's unfortunate, it's unfortunate, but um, we all love her, and we're going to truly miss her. Dre, everybody that we've talked to talked about her big heart. Is, the, is that what, what made you fall in love with her? Um, her stature was small, but you can't put any size on her heart. Uh, she was the typical prototype of what a woman, a young woman, growing into a woman should be. And... Um, a lot of times people couldn't see what I could see and uh, I really didn't give a damn or not because I knew the true lady in the inside and I knew what her heart had carried. And so um, I was down with her to the end and I'm still down with her. So uh, like I say, I send my condolences out to her family, her mother, her sister and her, her brother um, who are truly loved by me and will continue to be truly loved. Dre, before we let you go, how, how are you doing? I told you that I had talked to, to t Boz and Chili uh, earlier today, and they were worried about you, as was Dallas Austin and, and others that I've talked to. How are you doing? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm holding up, but uh, it's like I left first when I got the news, and so uh, I don't know when I will touch back down. And From Dallas and Chili and, and uh, Tion, those are like my little brothers and little sisters. And uh, we go back, we all grew up together. We all grew up in the entertainment business. And this goes to show you that uh, you can't put a price on love. Dre, finally, I know that so much has been made and we said that we were gonna celebrate her life on this program. And we know that there's so many misconceptions about her and, and we have seen far too often that the video of the house on fire today and so many news uh, organizations are focusing on that Tell us about the idea of, of, of how many misconceptions about Lisa are out there. Clear some of those up for me before we let you go. 
Well, I, I believe one of one of her strong points, and I believe the legacy that will be carried on is what she wanted, and that was to, uh, to have open and freedom. Uh, she had a warm heart, uh, unbelievable kind, uh, unbelievable kindness, and and giving. I mean, she give she would give her last to to someone that she didn't know, and so um, the misconception about how she's perceived by the media or. Uh, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's very, uh, it's very vague. But at the same time, it's something that she took on the responsibilities of and showed young black women, despite ad- adversities, that you can still succeed. And I think that she showed our whole population that. And I, I believe that's what we have to build on. And Dre, what about her growth? I mean, you know, when when we were introduced to her, she was a baby at 21. She had become far more spiritual. She was always well-read. People didn't m- m- perhaps necessarily know that about her, but there was tremendous growth in this woman, wasn't there? Uh, tremendous growth. I mean, I've seen her since her baby years. You know, I grew right with her, um, lying right next to her, studying right next to her, growing right there with her as she grew and as we grew. And um, the the path, the, uh, the steps she's t- she take, she has taken, you know, she had taken in, in the short span of two years, you know, growing spiritually and uh, taking on God into her life at an all-time high. I believe, um, without a doubt, the best was yet to come, but there's a lot of unheard things that she's written down and put down that's unbelievable at stating how this world should be and how this earth should be. And I believe she's strong enough and she's somewhere now where she's in bigger hands than any of us on earth has. And I think she uh, she's going to be smiling for the rest of her life now. Well, Dre, I know she's going to live on through you, my friend. And I, I, again, as I said to you earlier today when we uh, talked on the phone, I appreciate your time. I know you haven't even had an opportunity to grieve. And uh, my condolences to you and, and yours. And uh, hang in, my friend. Thank you. Again, my thanks to uh, Andre Risen. We're going to take a break here. When we return, we'll talk to uh, two, two of uh, Lisa's closest friends, and later we'll talk with journalists who covered her. Back in a moment. Hard to believe that, uh, indeed, uh, she is gone. We're joined now by two of her uh, good friends. Natina Reed joins us from Atlanta. She was a member of the group Black. Uh, Lopez formed the group around Natina and uh, is the godmother uh, to Natina's child. We're also joined by Rashawn Ali Godfrey. She joins us uh, also from Atlanta. She was Lopez's personal, uh, uh, Lopez's, uh, personal assistant from 1998 to 1999. And she moved on to uh, work for LaFace Records, but the two remain friends and talked often. I thank you for joining us. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Natina, let me start with you. Uh, here was a woman who, who saw your talent, who I- embraced you, brought you into the fold, and was not only like a sister to you, but a mentor musically. Yeah, I love Lisa very much. Baby, we're going to try to celebrate this as best we can. So let let me let me try if I can get you to to tell us when you'll think about her and what makes you smile about her most. <laughs> I was just telling Rashawn about how every night um, me and Lisa would just laugh and talk about old memories or whatnot. We was living together previously um, within the last three months, right before my son was born. And um, Lisa was just the most kindest person on this earth, you know. She had a lot of questions about life. Um, she was very curious, like a child. She was innocent, you know. She never, um, she never understood certain things, and she had a lot of questions that was unanswered. I always told her that she had a very big heart and that I hope that one day somebody will give back to her the way she has given to many other people, including myself. Yeah. Um, she took very good care of me while I was pregnant, and she always was on this health kick. And I just, I just remember the good times about Lisa as well as, you know, the crazy side of her. Rashawn, we keep hearing big heart in everyone that we've talked to. That's uh, what is coming out about this young lady. Yes. Uh, you were her personal assistant for a year. Right. When, when you think about her, uh, what will you remember most? Her smile. 
and those eyes. You know, people talk about that left eye. There was something about Lisa's eyes that was, uh, they were majestic. Um, they spoke without speaking, and um, her being, when she came into the room, before you knew she walked in, her presence kind of preceded her, so you knew she was, something was going on. Um, she was a very beautiful person, and as her assistant, I always told myself that I wanted to get a chance to tell the world how Lisa really was, and I am so glad that I had this opportunity to tell the world that she was truly a genius. She was truly a person of the spirit. She was just in search of her peace, mm -hmm. and she has finally, finally found her peace with her maker, whom she thought about a lot, whom she questioned a lot, mm -hmm. but I think she's found him, and she's smiling on us, and she would want us to cry a little bit, but move on and just keep it going. And um, I'm happy that I was a part of her life and just spent that quiet time with her that I can learn from her, just learn from her being. So I'm just very happy to have been a part of Lisa Lopez's life for just a brief moment. And one of the things that I think she does not get credit for was her business savvy. Yes. She understood this business. Definitely. I had a chance to, I mean, I came in under Left Eye Productions where she had groups like Black and 90 and Sky and Genesee Choir and Drip Drop. She knew talent. And silhouette. She knew talent. And Rashawn, unlike some people, she was willing to, to share the idea that you can get a piece of this pie. Some people hoard it and hold it close, but she wanted everyone to do well, didn't she? Definitely. She told me as her assistant, she said, you know, you're a star. And that coming from a, yeah. a huge star like that was like, wow, really? Am I? So she saw something in me. And and Rashawn, she was she was willing to do the same musically, wasn't she? Oh, definitely. Lisa, you know, it's so funny because people know Lisa musically, but we know the artist. We know the pool player, the video yeah. game girl. We know, you know, the lady that, that can make clothes just from imagination without a pattern. That's the lady we know. The lady that can cook. Oh, my yeah. goodness. She can and cook. And, Latina, I, I know that, that you want to say, uh, finally, before we let you ladies go, that mm -hmm. here was a woman that you made uh, the godmother to your child. So not mm -hmm. only did you share the musical bond, but, but something very special. Yeah, Lisa and I were very close. We shared a lot of things that we never told her, so yeah. um, a lot of times Lisa was the only person that I could understand, and it was weird because it was almost like I was looking into the mirror. And she you know? understood you. And she yes. understood me, yeah. and it, for the first time it was actually somebody that I could say, wow, you're crazy like me, <laughs> and you're accepted by me, and you don't have to change, well, you know? Yeah, well, hopefully we'll... As the pain subsides, we'll remember the good things. Ladies, thank you for yeah, your time. Thank you for having us. Thank I you appreciate for it. Us. Take some, uh, uh, take a break here, and we'll come back with a journalist who covered the young lady. Back in a moment. Two people who knew and covered Lisa. Uh, joined now from Washington by Jamie Foster Brown, editor in chief of Sister to Sister magazine, and here with me in New York, Mimi Valdez. Uh, she wrote uh, for Vibe magazine and spent some time uh, with Lisa in Honduras. Jamie, we, we should note that this, you received a call last night, and, and this is difficult for you because you, you knew Lisa on a personal level, and I know you were sitting there, you were crying earlier. It still hasn't hit most of us. Okay. Wait a minute, Ed. I had just uh, said about three days ago, I had reached out to some friends of Lisa and said, okay, where's my baby? Go find her. And then they called me about 1 o'clock this morning and said, we don't want you to hear this from anybody else. We want you to know what happened. But at the time, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't confirmed. And they knew I was close to her because Lisa had taken me out to dinner. We had gone out clubbing. I was yeah. in Paris one time, and she called me over in Paris because she just had to talk, and I had to get up at 1 o'clock in the morning yeah. uh, to talk to her. Um, I knew that I, I met Trine. Trine was the woman that uh, she befriended when she was yeah. in the halfway house. And she was, and as they she were. She adopted her daughter. Yeah, she, the, she was, as uh, many, many people have said, uh, very open to doing that. Mimi, when you traveled to Honduras with her, what was it about that land that she unfortunately ultimately died in uh, that she loved so much? To her, Honduras wasn't a place where she went on vacation and, you know, was at the beach hanging out getting a suntan. This was a place where she came for peace. This was a place that she was Lisa. She wasn't left eye. You know, it was a, a place for spiritual cleansing, for fasting, 
for health and fitness, for exercising. If anyone accompanied, accompanied her to Honduras, it wasn't to have fun. It was also to get them into the spiritual cleansing as well. What was it about uh, becoming more spiritual that was so important to her? I think um, somewhere around 1997, she realized that her life, um, you know, she had often talked about she didn't even really want to live anymore. She just felt her life was very hectic. But around 1997, she just became more positive about life and wanted to just, you know, get rid of the demons. So from there is when she sort of went on this quest. And then um, Honduras was just a place that she just loved so much. Hey, Jamie, with about a minute left, it's remarkable how much growth uh, this young lady uh, showed and perhaps didn't get the credit she deserved. No, and, and I don't want her legacy to be this fire thing because there were a lot of things happened why uh, that house was set on fire, which was an accident. Her stuff was burned up in there also. And I also wanted to thank her mother. I talked to the parents today, uh, the stepfather, and I wanted to thank the mother for bringing such a wonderful creature on, on Earth. She was absolutely um, incredible. She did have a big heart. She, was, she wanted to actually do a column in the magazine. We never really got it off because she was so busy running around doing other things. But I, I loved her dearly, as I, I do all the T-Boz and Chili yeah. also. So well, it's not just Lisa, but Lisa and I were very close. Close indeed, Jamie. Thank you very much. And Mimi, thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. I want to thank all of our guests, particularly T. Boz and uh, Chili, Andre Risen, and uh, Dallas Austin, who uh, I talked to earlier today. For many of you who want to continue to send your love to uh, Lisa, you can go on to BET.com and go to the chat room. For all of us here in New York City, good night.